and welcome. Coming to you straight from the bunker. This is Jeremy in the Genesee County Compassion Club show. Get down! <laughs> What's everybody doing today? It is a beautiful day. It is July. We're here in Flint, Michigan, believe it or not. Um, deep, deep in the bellows of Flint. I'm underneath broadcasting you live from allpointstv.com. I got John. He's over there behind the other computer unit. John? Yeah, and also I covered the uh, press conference the mayor had today about the water condition, so it kind of looks fitting, you know, the, the, your suggestion about the bunker there. So I'm yeah. telling you, man, We're in it's the time bunker. to go deep, it's time to dig in, time to bug out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing today? we got lots of stuff we want to talk about. We're going to be talking about medical marijuana. going to be talking about the Genesee County Compassion Club. Let you know what's heading, happening, what's going to happen. All right, uh, man. Hey, hang on a second. Be right back. Hey, I'm sorry, man. I didn't shut the door. <laughs> sorry, I was, I was bouncing off the door out there. So, all right. Uh, I'm gonna let you know what's been happening around Michigan with marijuana, and let you know what's been happening around the nation as well. It's been a busy week. And get you guys up to date. I know it's been uh, probably a couple weeks since we've been back in the studio, but it's good to be here. Uh, John said you were just covering the Flint's Mayor's Conference on the Water. Uh, you want to give us a little quick heads up here on the Compassion Club show? What's been happening? Well, yeah, according to the mayor and the people, the city and the county and uh, Michigan officials, you know, Michigan, the state of Michigan officials, they're going to keep some of the, you know, the uh, distribution points for the water. Are they going to be co oh, many of them are going to be open right until like September, and then some are going to be phased out, and then um, they're going to be. They also give a list of those that are going to remain open until any length, great length of time. You know, they don't know how long they're going to be operation, but they're not like a, have immediate plans to shut them down. And I posted that on Inside Genesee as well as on uh, All Points TV. So it's got a few, you know, they're quite a bit of information. It's like a 30 minute, um, 30 minute uh, press conference. Very good. So, well, that's, uh, that's what we do here. All Points TV, keeping you guys informed and in tune with what's going on. Um, you know, a lot of folks still being affected by the Flint rock water crisis, it's uh, it's real, and they're still giving out water. So, how long is this going to continue to happen? We don't know, but they definitely need to continue handing out water. Isn't that right, John? I mean, I the the water, but the parts per million of the contamination is diminished quite a bit, and it's in the acceptable range. You know, they say the allowable range, but mm -hmm. it still hasn't. They the reason why they're keeping these um old, these sites, water sites, water distribution sites open is because they don't want to try to say, hey, people, it's okay, and then. People into the but it's not crept into the got into the people's mind that uh, it's the actual uh, fact. So they want to just to make for an assurance to the people they want to keep these water sites open. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, but they have gone down from like uh, 20 parts per million down or per billion or whatever down to four to six, which is well within the ranges of except you know, a lot of other play areas got even probably worse. And yeah. and that's one thing I like to people to keep in mind ours is bad, but Ohio and Indiana. Had a study that are far worse than ours, hmm. so we actually are fortunate to get as much focus as we've had on ours. Right. Our water crisis. Sure, yeah, it's a problem happening across the Midwest. It's a huge infrastructure issue. It's not just located here in Flint. That's for sure. So, all right, uh, let's let you know what's been happening down at the Genesee County Compassion Club because that's definitely a lot more positive place than what we were just referring to. So, uh, let's let you know we've been having our Adopt a Highway. We just got out there at M13, helped get that cleaned up. Definitely want to say thank you to all our volunteers who showed up for that. I think that's like our umpteenth time cleaning the highway. It's spick and span. Um, hey, we do what we can here in the county. Try to give back. Try to keep things positive. Try to keep things moving forward. And uh, we have a soup kitchen coming up here in just two days. So if you could help out, we'd be serving at the North End Charities Soup Kitchen over here on Stewart Street. So come on down Friday afternoon if you can help out. You can go straight to the soup kitchen, or if you want to meet us out at the club on Genesee, you're more than welcome there. Uh, either way, we'll be serving at about 4 p.m., all right? Okay, uh, I want to get into the news and dive right in. We've had some events happening that uh, I want to get you guys up to par on. I think the most recent one that's probably on most people's minds, if you're aware at all, is up in Gaylord. A little bit of a showdown going on between the uh, law enforcement and the dispensaries. This has been sort of an ongoing saga for the last few years. Uh, there's been a number of dispensaries that have been opened, closed, opened back up again now, closed again. Um, and it seems that the between the citizens and the law enforcement, they can't seem to make up their mind as to what's really going to happen. Uh, Gaylord passed ordinance for ordinances for medical marijuana facilities. 
uh, and they've been running smooth and efficiently uh, up until just two days ago when the state police busted five different dispensaries up there and made quite a few different arrests. I guess arrests were made prior to the actual raids occurring on the business properties. Uh, some of the arrests were made prior to those, uh, even up to two days prior, and arrests were also made during the raids as well. Michigan State Police recovered uh, quite a bit of marijuana from e each of these locations. They didn't say how it was broken down amongst each one, they just kind of gave it in total. Um, they had plants that were recovered as well, other types of edibles and concentrates, along with other types of uh, usable marijuana forms and in addition found other drugs as well. So it doesn't look real good when they pile it all together like that in the paper. Uh, of course, this is involving a lot of different people. It's involving multi different businesses that are not necessarily affiliated with each other. So this is kind of an area sweep, if you will, that occurred in Gaylord. Um, again, conducted by Michigan State Police, and I'm sure they also included surrounding law enforcement as well and drug teams. But uh, this took place on Tuesday, or I'm sorry, on Monday, and uh, kind of shocking. I mean, Gaylord had, like I said, closed down after they had original openings. Uh, they had some, ha had actually some bust happen prior. Uh, then the town went back and passed an ordinance allowing some of these facilities to be there. They reopened, and now uh, I think it's approximately a year and a half later, maybe two years after they've done this. Now we have the police coming in and shutting them down again, raiding them, um, and essentially arresting them. So pretty serious involvement here, pretty serious charges. The state police went on record, did a press conference yesterday. You can check that on Facebook uh, where the police chief is talking about the different charges that would be dropped. Uh, one of them would be manufacturing and selling marijuana, uh, along with, he said, various other charges would be pressed as well. So we'll have yet to see all the different outcomes, who different people are that are involved in the businesses and so on. But at any rate, right now, uh, definitely an alarming issue going on up in the area. I know that they had patients arriving to these places as the raids were going on and the patients were, you know, aghast. They're wondering, you know, wh what's going on and, and number one, why are there police here? I'm just here to get medication. Uh, and. and what do I do now? You know, I, I don't have medication. What am I supposed to go do? Just not have my meds for the day? So at any rate, not a good situation up in Gaylord. Um, we'll keep you in tune as to what happens, but this will definitely be a long, drawn-out process. This is all the information that I have at this time. Um, I believe, I would believe that there's probably still ongoing investigations uh, in, on this subject, on this issue. So... Yeah, by the way, I've got to give you a heads up. I think we're yeah. getting a call. We're going to call about 320 or so. We've got somebody playing. 320? 320. Okay. Yeah, we're not here at 420, so. Right. I know, so. But yeah, I just want to give you a heads up. Yeah. So anyway, he'll be calling in about um, the, medical, the medical marijuana, you know, compassion clubs, all the movement and everything else. That's what he wants to discuss. So he just, sure. I just got word, okay? Yep. Uh, one of the things that the state police talked about is that these businesses that they had raided were dealing with people that they weren't connected to through the registry and uh, they're saying that that is outright breaking the law it's not okay but then he turned right back around in the same sentence and said but however in december the state will be issuing licenses for people to go ahead and do that um so I, obviously it's a, a sticky issue up there we're still having problems with you know how do the state police interpret law or how do you know individuals interpret it so on and so forth and then on the heels of this we have big corporations stepping in and saying, yeah, you know what, screw all that, we paid our fee, we're gonna go ahead and now everything's okay. So I think it's kind of uh, baffling how this is going on. It's, it's sickening definitely to look at these examples and think that, okay, well just because someone is now going to pay a license fee, it makes it legal and what was legal at the beginning you know, got construed as being illegal by our judges at some way along the line, and now it's going to be made legal again if you just pay enough money back to the government. Um, so yeah, it is kind of disgusting when you look at how our law was passed by the citizens. It was drafted by a citizen initiative, passed by the citizens, uh, you know, put through our legislature, a constitutional change, an amendment put through, and then manipulated by our legislature and by our judges and by our law enforcement, really, to be construed into something that it wasn't, only to turn back around and to offer the same exact product to the public, um, but making it okay now because they collect the money on it. I mean, come on. This is just, 
it, it's ugly. You know what I mean? I, I understand we have to have regulation. There needs to be regulation to businesses. We need to ensure safety, quality, and those sort of things. Uh, I certainly don't have a problem with paying taxes. Taxes must be collected. They must be paid. But, you know, to put people in jail, to take away their, uh, their livelihood, to confiscate their uh, assets, to treat them as criminals, to, to do all of this just because they didn't pay enough money to the state. Is, is that the kind of society that we want to live in? I know that when we passed our law back in 2008, one of the main points that was put forth in getting that law passed was saying to Michiganders, hey, aren't we tired of spending our resources prosecuting people for this harmless activity, for something that happens anyways? That was one of the main things, one of the main reasons that was used to justify why we should be passing this law to people that didn't really care about marijuana. We said, you know what, this is going to save us money. We won't have to go after these people. These people can seek out the medication that they choose, that their doctor recommends, and we're not going to bother them. That's really what the gist of it was. And yet our state did anything but that. It has amped up its prosecution. It has increased its presence on marijuana in general and they continue to do so and with the new law that was passed last year we went ahead and further allowed them to dedicate more resources to it more resources more positions 22 new full-time positions drafted specifically for the enforcement of marijuana it's just mind numbing when we look at what we've allowed to happen when what our intentions were in the first place it's, it's mind numbing. So I guess let's move on to the next subject. And I want to move into this because I think it's applicable. We need to take a close look at what's happening right now. And right now what's happening is a ballot proposal is circulating your state to legalize marijuana for adult use ages 21 and older. It also legalizes other things such as industrial hemp production. Uh, it, it, it would legalize the facilitation of marijuana in general, it opened up the market, it establishes taxes, where the revenue would be taken to when it is collected by the state, so on and so forth, quite extensive. And is this the bill that we want? I would say we need to look at these things carefully and then not only after it's passed, we need to carefully pay attention to its implementation to ensure that it's going to be carried out in a fashion that we deem appropriate here in our own society, um, not to be dictated by some oligarchy like we're having right now. We gotta be careful. So the ballot proposal, uh, I did wanna report on that. It is gaining steam. They are continuing to collect signatures en masse. They are paid signature collectors out there that are getting this job done. It is going to happen. I would almost guarantee you that you will see this on your ballot uh, at some point soon, possibly in November, that you will see it on the ballot the adult use of marijuana for Michigan right here. You're going to see that on the ballot. And, and there's already groups that are gaining support uh, to, to support that ballot when it gets on the ballot. All right. So, I mean, you think about it. If you're trying to get something passed, you got to have a big advertising campaign and so on and so forth. The money is coming for that stuff. So it's looking like it's going to happen here in Michigan. Are we ready for it? And... What are we doing to these people in the meantime? I mean, I think that we have to look at that right now because we're gonna look at it in three years. When marijuana is legalized in Michigan three years from now, and we look back and we say, all right, so the last 30 years of people that we've prosecuted for this drug that we no longer consider harmful, that we now deem to be legal, that we tax, uh, that we've accepted, what do we do with the people that we just prosecuted, put in jail, confiscated their stuff. What do we do with those people? Do we do anything with them? Do we leave the ones that are in jail, in jail? Do we restitute the people that were stolen from? What do we do? And I think that's we need to look at that question now so that we can prevent errors here in the next three years. So stuff like what's happening up in Gaylord, is that really the best use of that you know, community's resources? Is that the best use of our resources as a state? to go after, to spend all the money that's already spent, which was probably quite a bit considering they raided five different businesses. You're talking about a lot of different law enforcement groups uh, and activities that had to take place to make that occur. 
So we spent all that money there. Now we're gonna go spend thousands more on court costs and attorneys and so on going after these individuals in court. Is it worth it? Does it even make sense when marijuana will be legalized three years from now? Can we have the foresight to execute on that? I don't know if we can or not. It seems like we're just, we got our blinders on and we're digging holes and we're here in the bunker and nobody's listening. You know what I mean? That's what it seems like. All right, well, let's move on. Kalamazoo is a place where they apparently are not in the bunker and they're having a meeting right now. Right now, they're gonna, have, they're gonna be talking about what to do about the new marijuana law. So this is a place that's on the ball. They're researching the information. They're looking at where they're gonna be zoning their new facilities. They understand what they have the ability to zone and license. So they're not sitting around. They're also including changes that need to be made to their current ordinance involving medical marijuana as well. So here's a community that's forward thinking, being progressive and not sitting on a stump collecting moss. So kudos to Kalamazoo. Uh, there's other communities around the state that are doing the same thing. So kudos to them. And there's other communities that have chosen to not do anything purposely because they want further direction from the state. I say kudos to them as well. So, uh, all right, let's move on here. You guys probably saw the ad on MLive about marijuana, marijuana use increasing in Michigan. You guys see this? Uh, and it, it, I believe it was talking about marijuana use in general, but then the numbers that it gives, if you went into their little report, the numbers that it gives are based on medical marijuana people, not just marijuana use in general. Uh, they did have some basic statistical information. I think the number given was 10%. So 10% of adults in Michigan have uh, have used or do use marijuana and uh, reportedly that's up from previous years which was reported at eight and nine percent so not big jumps here but I, I don't know I mean I would say you would have to argue yes there is a more prevalent marijuana use in Michigan uh, than we saw say five years ago I think we got to call it's quite the ringtone yeah hello hey this is Nick from Green Cross Medical Center Hi, Nick. How you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Good. Thanks for calling in to the Genesee County Compassion Club show. Appreciate it. Awesome. What can we talk about today? Well, what's on your mind, Nick? How's things? Where? What area are you in? What's, what area of the state are you in? Uh, we're at Green Cross Medical Marijuana Center. is the first licensed center in Detroit. Fantastic. We were the first to get our approval with the city of Detroit. Oh, fantastic. And uh, we, we also work with helping the city obtain their ordinance uh an ordinance that reflected from san francisco very good and uh, so you guys weren't trying to reinvent the wheel with that one huh absolutely not and right. we're also going to help them uh, they're going to need a new ordinance for the medical marijuana facilities act coming uh in january when the when the state when the state gets there their, absolutely and that's their uh their facilities act license now being obviously you're on the front lines there in detroit what is detroit doing right now if anything in regards to the new facilities act uh, they're not doing anything right now okay but they are going to hold preference to the facilities there's five approved facilities and the five approved facilities that the five facilities that um, our license are going to get preference to um, getting being first in line so they don't have to go through all the zoning and all the criteria that they had to go through for the caregiver center. Okay. See? okay. Because right now the license in, in the city of Detroit is called the caregiver center. Okay. So that's what they're currently doing right now. Uh, and it, Now I understand that after they passed their ordinance they went back and shuttered quite a few different places that had opened in the meantime is that correct definitely a, a, a lot of those a lot of those places were um not in the correct zoning and operating illegally right not obtaining the of occupancy they just they just um, saw an empty building and said hey we're gonna throw up shop here and, and did it correct yeah and a lot of those places were by drug-free zones which is parks uh, ordinance. care centers yeah absolutely so these are red zones, if you will. Obviously, you shouldn't, 
You don't want to have anything like that. Sort of like opening up a strip club next to church, right? Right. I mean, we don't. Absolutely. This is inappropriate, wrong place. So, so you're one of the places that did it right. You, you found the right place. You got. You worked with the city. You helped get the ordinance drafted. You got it drafted. You got approved. So, how are things going for you now? How is how is business? Oh, it's going great. Good. We have a lot of competition with all these spots that I haven't opened legally. But the city owes them due process. They can't just shut them down right away. Sure. So a lot of will get shut down eventually, but they're owed the due process. Um, sure. Now, they, now uh, they've been operating for who knows how long, and you got to at least go in, like you said, give due process. So. Yeah. The city doesn't want a bunch of lawsuits. No, so, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. the process right now. Huh. And um, – we're doing great. We have uh, the health department in once a week. Wow. Um, all our all products have to be tested. Once a week, they um, come in and check you out. Once a week, the health department um, comes in, can, grabs uh, strains or edibles off um, off the shelf, and uh, we have to provide their uh, PSI lab reports or iron lab lab reports to make sure there's no pesticides or mold or, or you know the, the product is good yep but... sure so it sounds like you got a pretty well regulated business already um definitely yeah it took us a year of paperwork and uh zoning and uh inspections to get our place approved i imagine now let me ask you this question you don't have to answer it but i mean how do you feel about the new uh facilities act and you know now that you've done all this work you've, you've already you've been doing it you, you've already put in the hard work if you will do you plan to do it over again or are you going to stick with what you're doing uh, where do you stand um we you know we're gonna have to uh, abide by this uh the state law sure um there's some pros and cons to the act um taxing uh patients for medication I don't feel is appropriate because when you go to a pharmacy, you don't have taxes on your right. on your prescription. So it's kind of a catch twenty two still. Sure, there's a lot of corru- a lot of corruption going on um, with um, the people on the board. Some of the people on the board should have been patient and advocates. Now, are you not referring only, to the uh... not only? Are you referring to the state board or city board? Which which board are you referring to? The state board. The Lara Department board. Correct. Yes. The yeah. five. The five people. Yeah, I would agree uh, with government. that. I would agree with you a hundred percent because you're absolutely right. You know, we have uh, a former law enforcement officer on there. Um, you know, you got a couple of different people that were very openly adversarial to medical marijuana and now they're on the board and yet the board does not have anybody on it that really represents patients and there's certainly Absolutely. nobody on there that represents I, I agree. you know the caregiver part of it either so but uh no i would agree with you 100 percent there that's that's definitely interesting so there, there needs to be some class action lawsuits against the state i, um, I think you stop I think there'd be a long line of people who'd probably want to join up with you on that one. You know, I, especially these and folks we, up in Gaylord that we, we were just talking it. about, you know, the folks up in Gaylord Absolutely. that were just busted. And, you know, they're not the only ones around the state. A lot of folks feel that way. So and I guess that's kind of what I was asking uh, you in regards to your business is, you know, here you are. You've spent this you know, investment to create what you have right now. And now you're going to potentially have to go do that over again because the state's new law. Is that accurate? That's pretty ac- accurate. And if we if we get any um, any for them not cooperating with us or denying us any license, you better believe that our lawyers are ready to file lawsuits. Sure. Because there's there's millions of dollars invested here. Well, yeah, and, and essentially your city's already approved you, right? Now they, but they approved Absolutely. you for the old way, if you will. Now you need them to approve you for the new way, and then the state has to approve you as well. So there could be blowback at any one of those levels, even though you're already currently operating. Absolutely, and, there, and there's uh, <laughs> corporations as we speak. I don't want to give no names out sure, there, no. but there's corporations going against 
the, the operating dispensaries, even if the city approved them, they're trying to offer their their um, their opinion to the state that uh, they they've been operating illegally, right. which is not true. It's, it's you know someone that uh, one of the right. board members quoted. Hmm. Very interesting. And I, I think you're, what you're saying there is perfectly echoed live example up in Gaylord. I mean, I think that's a, a perfect example. Um, Absolutely. What they're, what they're doing to Chad Merrow um, at Cloud, I think Cloud 9 or Cloud 45. Yep. And, you know, it's, it, it, that all comes down to a zoning um, because there's another officer that wants to open a liquor store and can't be within the area of a dispensary. That, 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 that almost there's sounds a lot, like a, a lot of corruption going on. A personal thing going on, you know, like a this is this is my land kind of a thing. You know, like wow, that, that's even deeper than the normal kind of <laughs> issues we're worried about. So wow, uh, I wasn't aware of that. But I mean, I, I do see how it seems like there there can be, will be, probably will be a push uh, from law enforcement, but really. The, the push is coming from the corporate guys who are saying, Hey, look, we need to get rid of these competition. And, and, you know, those corporate guys and law enforcement go hand in hand because they're the ones supporting and lobbying. Yeah. Who's at, who's at all the police events or who's at all the the corporate events. Sure. They're they're the ones that got the money. They're they're scratching (laughs) each other back. Exactly. They got the money. So we, as the people, this is a, this is a, a people voters approved act. The people need to stand up. The people need to fight back. There needs to be class action lawsuits where this is this is a fair for everybody, for the little guy and the big guy. It needs to be fair all the way around. Right, right. And um, well, I, I, I hate to cut you short. This is uh, this is about the time I have to uh, talk to you guys. I really appreciate you calling if, in. Thank you. I always listen to your show. If uh, anybody's in the Detroit area, come visit us at Green Cross. We're on Eight Mile. We're one of the licensed uh, few dispensaries, medical marijuana centers that, that have everything tested and uh, real helpful to our patients. Cool. Well, hey, thank you. All right. Appreciate it very much. You got All right. it. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you got absolutely. We'll you. All right, that's our buddies at the Green Cross <laughs> down there in 8 miles. So if you're in the area, check them out. Um, but, you know, this is the plight of medical marijuana here in Michigan. And uh, we're going to see how this rolls out next year, next two years. Uh, you know, will there be room for small businesses? Uh, guys like Chad Morrow, guys like us, guys like Cloud 45, guys like, uh, you know, our friends there at Green Cross. You know, there are businesses all over the state that are currently, they're operating completely 100% in compliance. They're legal. Uh, they're paying taxes. They've been zoned. They, they've, they've got their licenses and yet they're being prosecuted you know they're being sort of persecuted if you will you know and and i think that we got to get these stories out we got to make this story known we got to recognize it for what it is and we have to get that story out there so hopefully we'll be doing that here continuing to do that on the podcast and you know hopefully we can see some sort of uh i guess answer really from the state to this issue instead of helping to create the issue uh let's help solve it and i think that we could from the state you know if they ease their licensing process make it easy for people to get their licenses especially people that are already in business uh you know people that are operating in compliance people that are welcome in their community i think that's what they should be looking at and little less towards whether or not they've got the investment portfolio to meet their demands so i don't know we'll have to see how this goes all right Anyways, we were talking about marijuana use increasing in Michigan before our call. It is certainly going up. You could argue that. I don't think you could argue it any other way. I also think that in addition to the increase, the actual increase, I think the increase also comes from people admitting that they're using marijuana. Where 10 years ago, you asked you know, Joe Blow on the corner if he was using marijuana, and he looked at you like, are you going to take me to jail? Is this a trick question? You know, whereas now Joe Blow says, heck yeah, it isn't everybody. So I think there's just a more open social acceptance of marijuana use. And I think people are now starting to understand that you can use marijuana and not be a druggie. 
not be you know whacked out. Uh, I think folks are starting to understand. They realize people that weren't familiar with marijuana and its effects, who had heard the horror stories and you know believed the propaganda, and they're starting to find out most of that was not true. It was a lie, and the folks right around you in your environment, in your neighborhood, are probably smoking weed, uh, and you just didn't even know. So that's how natural it is, and uh, that's how far-fetched these lies are so i think folks are realizing that and they feel more comfortable and they're coming out and they're saying yeah i've used marijuana and so the little statistician who's taking the phone call and writing down numbers is getting higher numbers because people are being more honest so all right uh another thing i want to talk about real quick this is a federal thing i won't spend too much time on it but right now there has been a lawsuit filed in new york district court saying that the Schedule 1 of marijuana is unconstitutional. Um, I believe there's also another federal lawsuit that was filed directly at the U.S. Attorney General Sessions. Um, not going to get into these because I'm sure people sue the government every day, all day, just a matter of whether or not you got enough money to actually do that. Whether anything comes of it is a whole different ballgame. I highly doubt this will do anything. I mean, the government, you just sue the government, right? I mean, OJ's out. Anything can happen, right? Okay. Uh, district attorney in Colorado says that marijuana is a gateway drug to homicide. Okay. I've heard a lot of stories about marijuana. I've heard a lot of propaganda. And I have heard it said that marijuana is a gateway drug. I have never heard it said a gateway is to homicide. That's a little extreme, okay? <laughs> um, I don't... I don't know where this person comes up with their stuff. Uh, somebody that makes that kind of comment was probably drinking on the job. Uh, hopefully we can move on. Meanwhile, in Colorado, they have collected a half a billion dollars in tax revenue. All right, that's no laughing matter. A half a billion dollars, $500 million has been collected on marijuana tax in Colorado alone. Um, remember, folks, that money goes to their schools, it goes to their roads, it goes a little bit to their police department, and it also goes to educating the public about marijuana use, the safety of it, precautions of it, so on and so forth. So if you go to Colorado, you will see billboards on the side of the road that say, don't drive and get high. Just like we have billboards here that say buzz driving is illegal. So the money for those things has come directly from the marijuana sales itself, and they've collected a half a billion dollars in Colorado. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, I would say the same thing is coming to Michigan. It's coming. We need to ensure that it's done correctly so that we have an open market, so that we can allow the common man to get a place in the business, uh, and so that we can also make improvements, so that we can benefit from this, so that people who aren't really affected by marijuana can still see the benefit from it. Um, all right, and lastly, quick article here about exercise and marijuana. Uh, it's kind of an interesting article. It definitely wasn't written from like, you know, it's not necessarily a High Times article. Uh, this was on U.S. News and World Reports. And it was talking about the different things that marijuana can do. And I think some of them are just pretty downright obvious, especially to the medical marijuana user. Number one thing that they were saying that marijuana provides to you uh, in regards to allowing you to exercise is pain management, which obviously a lot of folks take marijuana for chronic pain. Uh, the other thing that it does allow most folks to do is to focus. Um, focus on the sport you're playing or on the activity that you're doing. Uh, the mental focus, the mind over matter. You know, and I would have to agree with that. I think it does bring people into focus. I've heard a lot of folks be able to use cannabis effectively just for that purpose. Um, you know, I don't know that cannabis use while you're participating in the sport is necessarily the best thing, maybe prior to, and in some cases, maybe not prior to, maybe after is the better way to go. It sort of depends on what we're talking about. When it comes to motor skills, marijuana does cause change in visual perception. So like we had our softball team, I can tell you that, you know, on the days that you smoked heavy before the ball game, it was harder to catch the ball. Um, at any rate, that's a fact. So it does have a, a visual perception effect. Uh, coordination and reaction time, all of which were negatively impacted uh, by marijuana, uh, obviously are going to impact the ability to exercise, particularly if the activity requires complex movements and high levels of agility. Um, but again, it, you might want to use the marijuana after if that's the type of sport that you're doing. Some folks can't even move 
without the marijuana in the first place because of the first thing we talked about, which was the pain management. All right, next thing is anxiety. Uh, this is something that I think you know all folks experience, not just folks that are going to be doing exercise. You know, maybe you're going to compete in an event, and so you're anxious about it. Maybe you just get anxious because you're going to be out in public exercising. Um, whatever the thing is, cannabis can help with that anxiety. Cannabis can also not help with the anxiety. Sometimes the uh, strong sativa or just someone's particular personality or the place that they're at for that particular day, it's not a good mix and it makes them more anxious and it makes them, you know, the typical paranoia will destroy a type of thing comes on. So you do have to be careful about, you know, what are you using? How are you using? And it's not just a free for all. So if you're feeling nervous before an event, you know, hitting a joint might not be the best thing to do or it might be the best. See, I always wonder. It kind of depends on the person and the medicine. I always wonder about that because people, it was contradictory, it seemed contradictory. People say, I smoke weed because it mellows me out. And then I've also heard, well, when I smoke weed, sometimes I feel paranoid. Well, that's the opposite of mellowing yeah. out. So uh, it wasn't because of drug, because it's uh, illegal that made them paranoid or that no. the, actual, the actual substance itself would cause it. I yeah, know. I know a lot of folks have pointed that out that, you know, well, you wouldn't be paranoid if it wasn't illegal. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. The, the except in, increase in anxiety can happen from cannabis. Uh, you know, the science behind it, I don't have an explanation for you, but I can tell you I've experienced it firsthand and I've seen it secondhand with my patients. Some patients uh, can effectively use certain types of cannabis and feel completely 100% relaxed, while other types of cannabis will amp them up, as they say, and make them anxious or paranoid. Um, they, you know, certain types of cannabis are more cerebral, so they're going to make you think more. And, you know, sometimes people can't handle that, and that results in anxiety, I think, is where that comes from. So it's not a full 100 proof, oh, go ahead and smoke this, and you're going to relax. It's, that's not necessarily the case, and I think if you're not familiar with uh, cannabis, or if you're not familiar with a particular strain of cannabis that you're about to use, you might need to take caution if that's something that you're susceptible to. So, um, the, the a big part of the article is you know when to use cannabis, and I think that has to be up to the individual uh, and also the time and place. So, you know, it might be better to use before, uh, probably not the best case to do it during if it's sort of a you know physical, you know, something where you're going to get your heart going, uh, or it might be better to do use after. But uh, at any rate, it's up to the individual to decide when to use their cannabis. But uh, I thought it was kind of an interesting article. I liked the way it was presented. It did have some of the cons. You know, they did focus on smoking in the article quite a bit. Obviously, smoking is not good for the lungs, closing up your ability to, you know, get oxygen in your blood, which you need that when you're exercising. So there's other ways, as we know full well, to medicate yourself without smoking. Uh, so I think that's something, again, you have to look at for the individual, what are they using it for, when do they need it to be effective, so on and so forth. Um, like I said, I know quite a few different people that are involved in athletic type situations where they're playing sports or just simply exercising and they cannot even begin the activity until they have had their medication because that's what allows them their body to relax. It allows their muscles to relax so that they can actually move. Um, it provides the pain relief so that they can ignore the pain and concentrate on what it is they wanted to do. So, it, you know, again, sometimes it could be better before and sometimes it might be better afterwards. So at any rate, I think cannabis and exercise do go together. I think it's a beautiful blend and I believe that you have to experiment to find out what works best for you. I think you have to be careful because you might be involved in an event that does involve, you know, where you have to be agile or you have to be quick. Uh, it may involve the ability or the capacity to get injured. So you want to be careful and make sure that you're not going to put yourself in a bad situation. Um, so I would say take caution if you're going to be doing something that you're not usually stoned doing. You know what I mean? Um, so at any rate, check it out. It's, it, I think they do blend well. Uh, you know, I would say case in point, Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he won his first Mr. Olympia, the first thing he did was smoke the joint. You can watch it on uh, his movie. I think it's called Pumping Iron. But yeah. um, he's I, not the only athlete to have ever done that. Quite a few athletes have sparked up a joint. And, you know, I think that if you look at most sporting events, oftentimes alcohol is paired there because that's what's sponsored and that's what's socially acceptable. But, you know, I don't think that's necessarily preferred by the athlete. I think there should be better choices available for them. And I certainly think there should be better choices available for them outside of the recreational bit when it comes to the medicinal part of it. You know, a lot of 
athletes are on painkillers, muscle relaxers, laxers, excuse me, so on and so forth. Cannabis can obviously be a substitute or a replacement for those items, and more athletes are openly talking about that and bringing that to the forefront. We're now seeing professional athletes step up uh, after they've gotten out of the sport and say, heck yeah, it was the best thing I ever had for me. I don't know what I've done without it. Um, and no, it didn't affect my ability to play. So we're hearing these things come from people that we respect, and I think that's good because it's, again, squashing propaganda and putting truth in our face. That's good stuff. Um, all right, that's what I got for you this week. I want to say thank you for joining me. John, thank you for being in the studio. Back here at allpointstv.com. Make sure you check out their other podcast for all the other pertinent information in and around Flint Town. Um, get out, enjoy the city. I had a chance last uh, weekend or so to get down to the Flint Art Festival. It was a lot of fun. Got to see Brian's display out there with all the skateboards and t-shirts. It was awesome. It was pretty sweet. Um, but get out there. Get out there and enjoy the town. Summer's going to be over before you know it. Thanks for being here with me on the podcast. This is the Genesee County Compassion Club show. Have a good week.